Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about scale up of fermentation. So this figure show what a scale up is. Scale up is basically increase in moly. In the most of the fermentations, we will be discovering that we are isolating the organism and devising the fermentation, optimizing the medium. Everything we are doing it in a small fermenter in a laboratory, which is called a laboratory scale fermenter. Its volume may be from 1 liter to 10 liter for a maximum of 100 liter. That's the maximum capacity of a laboratory scale fermenters. Once we found the fermentation is economical, fermentation can be used commercially, we need to increase the volume of production. From the 10 liters, we may need to increase its volume into 1 lakh liter or 10 lakh liter. The process of increasing the volume of fermentation for the commercial process is called the scale up. You can see in this figure, we are, using, we are increasing the volume from a small fermenter with a little bit of medium into a large fermenter with a huge amount of medium. That's what the scale up is. So, in bioprocess development, in a laboratory, scale is translated into a manufactured scale process. So, laboratory scale is around, let's say, 0.5 to 10 liter capacity medium. A manufacturing scale or a commercial scale is like 20,000 to 20 lakh thousand liter volume. So that we can make it in huge quantities. The, some of the bioproducts, especially the low value, high volume products are required in high quanti quantity. Maybe if you see the example of ethanol, uh, the fuel ethanol or example of the citric acid, these things needed in huge quantities. In order to make it profitable, this thing should be made in huge quantities. So the process of translating the laboratory scale invention into large scale industries is called scale. It is basically done for the commercial purpose. Uh, the scale factor ranging from thousands to millions. So we are expanding this, this upsizing uh, the size of fermentation, increasing the scale of operation while maintaining the productivity. The results we are using, uh, getting in the laboratory scale should be able to, we should be able to reproduce the same results in large scale. So that's a difficult task. Uh, so we are doing it in a multi-stage process. So step by step, we are increasing the volume so that we can maintain the productivity in the uh, desired limit. The most of the time what happens is like uh, the, we, we may be able to get good productivity in small scale fermenters. But when we are trying to translate the same thing in large scale, it may fail. Just, just like making food. Making food for 10 people, we most of the people are able to make the food maybe make a tea for 10 people but if you ask to make tea for maybe a thousand people the same principle may not apply we need to have different strategies to make it for in huge huge quantities so it's the same thing applies for the scale up so in industry we need set of standards sets of scientific procedures to attain the scale up the time required for scale up is anywhere between three to ten years and it will need a huge financial investment like 10, 100 million to 1 billion US dollars. So it's time taking and cost costly. But once we get the productivity, the commercialize the product, the profit is also high. So what are the objectives of the scale up? The first objective is to ensure technical and economical viability of the project. So during scale up, we are actually expanding the volume, we are making the products in commercial scale in huge quantities. So in scale up, we are assuring that the productivity what we are seeing in the laboratory scale is reproducible in the large scale. To support the investment decisions, most of the time is before going to the industrial scale, the product process will be run in a demo fermenter so that the investors will get an idea whether it will work or it won't. So it is a main factor in investment decisions. It is actually helping maintain fermentation efficiency. So the what we are seeing in this small scale fermenters can be maintained in a large scale fermenter in a scale up process. In scale up, we are actually optimizing several factors. It is not a single step. We are not just increasing the volume that won't work. So in each and every stage there should be change. There should be changes in inoculant development. 
in a, for a laboratory scale, maybe 1 ml of medium or 10 ml of medium is more than enough. But in industrial scale, we need the inoculum maybe 10,000 or 1 lakh liter of inoculum is needed. So inoculum development strategy should change sterilization methods. In the most of the laboratory scale fermenters, we use in situ or ex situ sterilization. But in uh, industrial scale, the continuous sterilization is more preferred. So the technology should be changed. The instrumentation should be changed. And control of environmental parameters, which is the main hurdle. In a small fermenter, control of temperature is easy because it has a huge surface area when compared to the volume. Uh, you can actually control the temperature by just putting it in a water bath. But in the larger fermenter, which is not possible, the accumulation of heat is a huge issue. Accumulation of pH is a huge issue. Accumulation of microorganism or nu nutrient, the media components in a one area of the fermenter is an issue. So those things should be controlled during scale up. Shear conditions, the most of the higher, large fermenters need high mixing to assure that the medium is properly mixed and the uniform medium is maintained in the fermenter. But what happens is like if you want increase the speed of the rotor, the agitator, beyond some values, what happens? The shear stress will occur and it need to the cell death. So we cannot do that, but we need the good mixing of the medium. Downstream processing things should change, more commercial or industrial and downstream processing method should be devised so sometimes we need to change the whole process in laboratory we can isolate the product using chromatography but in large scale chromatography is not that a feasible option maybe you should go we should go for continuous centrifugation or for organic extraction things like that waste management is also a huge issue in scale up in a laboratory scale if you are using one liter media the waste disposal is not at all an issue but if you are getting a media output like 20 lakh liter medium, it's a huge issue. There should be a separate plan for the uh, waste disposal. So these are the objectives of the scale-up. There are different modeling methods because the scale-up is more expensive and time consuming. So before we are jumping into the scale-up process, there are some modeling like chemical stimulation studies uh, which will study the uh, chemistry behind the fermentation, how much nutrients is needed, how much product will be formed and how, what can be sh should be maintained, things like that. Mathematical models are there, like for C mathematics can be used for predicting uh, the scale-up uh, scale strategies. Then finite ele elemental analysis, which is also helpful. Then computational fluid dynamics, which is basically used of, to assure that the uniform environment is maintained in the medium. Uh, then artificial intelligence is used nowadays to predict the scale up parameters. And scale up is done in different stages. As I said before, it is a multi stage process. Basically, there are two different stages in scale up. First one is the pilot plant. Scale up is basically from the laboratory scale into industrial scale. So, we are not just jumping from the laboratory scale to the uh, industrial scale. What we do? First, we land up in a pilot plant, then into a demo plant, finally we will go to the industrial plant. So that is a multi-stage process. Sometimes there may be more than two intermediates, intermediate steps, sometimes four or five, things like that. So first stage is to make a pilot plant. Pilot plant uh, in, in its volume is between the laboratory scale plant and the industrial scale plant. Its volume is some somewhat around 100 to 10,000 liters. And the, it has ferment, the missionaries downstream equipments equivalent to the industrial scale. Maybe scale is small, but the same in principle. It's actually a scaled down version of the man, manufacturing process. So, from the laboratory scale, we go to the pilot plant. So, our aim is to make, the, make sure that fermentation efficiency is maintained in the pilot scale. So, if you are able to maintain the fermentation efficiency and productivity in the pilot scale, we can go to the next higher level. If you fail with many different efforts, if you fail to make sure that the technical, economical and the production viability of a fermenter, we will stop the fermentation there and we, will, we won't go to the commercial scale. Second scale uh, stage is the demonstration plant or demo scale. Uh, demo scale volume between uh, 10,000 to 100,000 liters and the match downstream processing. It is used for validating the process, supply chain and market demand. Uh, demo scale is actually done 
just before we are constructing a uh, dedicated industry for the particular bioprocess. We know if, if a fermentation process is successful in laboratory scale, we take it on the pilot scale, then we will done a demo in some other industries or some related facilities. We try to produce it in huge quantities. If that one is successful, we will take, we will make a dedicated plant for the production of the particular product. If the demo plant is say failure, we won't, we are not going to make the uh, huge plant. And some of the things may not work in the demo plant, so we will try to correct it and incorporate those changes in the real dedicated plant for the uh, bioprocess. So these are the basic two steps in uh, scale. Here we go. These are the parameters to be considered during scale up. I will just go through the scale. The slide first one is raw material grade. In laboratory scale, we will be using reagent grade, quantity reagent grade uh, products. So, but in industrial scale, we will, we need to use the waste product of some other industry. So, the its purity, concentration, load to load variation will be more in industrial raw materials. So, there should be some mechanisms to control it. Next is raw material sterilization. The sterilization in small scale is very easy. We often use it in batch mode, but in large scale, we need a continuous sterilization. If we won't be able to adapt to the raw material grade and raw material sterilization, what happens? The downstream processing will become difficult and the wastewater treatment will also become difficult. Then fermenter mixing time. If it is a large scale, the mixing time will be very high. So uh, there should be some mechanisms to make sure that adequate mixing is getting in the old parts of the fermenter in a huge fermenter. Then another important factor is gas liquid volumetric mass transfer co coefficient. In a fermenter which is uh, huge, there will be a gradient of uh, like dissolved oxygen which is not good. So there should be some mechanisms to maintain the uniform distribution of uh, air. So, in most of cases, we will be putting the sparges in different places to make sure that the oxygen is supplied in adequate, in, in adequate quantities. Growth hydrostatic pressure, which is a issue when we are going for a very high fermenters like 20 lakh liter. If it is a long fermenter, the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom will be very high. That even crush the microorganism and the uh, aeration will be difficult because more pressure is required to pump the oxygen into high pressure stage. So things like that have, happens in huge fermentation. Shear stress, uh, it's because of the high power of the stirrer which may kill the microorganism. Broth handling is very difficult because we are handling huge oleum. So most of times we are using the dedicated pipelines for the handling of broth. Broth deactivation, wastewater treatment plants should be made. Uh, inadequate like the huge plants will be required for deactivating the growth after the fermentation. So in the scale up we need to focus on different parameters. So the inoculation development, the seed line should be developed, sterilization should be in a continuous mode, the fermenter uh, we recommend, the people recommend like the geometry of the fermenter should be same in laboratory scale, pilot scale and the large scale. So the so that the scale will be easy. If you are using continuous sterile tank reactor at the pilot uh, at the laboratory scale, then using the airlift fermenter at the pilot scale, and finally you are using some other type of fermenters in industrial scale, the scale process will become more difficult. Stir configuration, which is difficult because we are using a huge fermenter. So for huge fermenter, we need huge stirrers with a high speed. But if you try to increase the speed, what happens is like it will lead to the shear stress and the death of the microorganism. So there should be some mechanism, say some points should be there so that the microorganism won't be harmed, productivity won't be harmed, but uniform mixing is achieved. Deformers is required in huge fermenters. In small scale fermenters, we can actually control it with the antiform agents or media change. But in large fermenters, which is not possible, another big issue is Hydrostatic pressure, as I told before, if you are using a long fermenter uh, the, and using a huge oleum like in lakhs of liters, in the bottom of the fermenter there will be huge pressure due to the uh, water or uh, the medium on top of that. That pressure will skew the microorganism and that may lead to the death of the microorganism. 
so hydrostatic pressure is not good the another thing is that the most of the families we use the aeration at the bottom so if the hydrostatic pressure is high the output of the air will be less but if you we need to use the huge pressure to pump air into the high hydrostatic pressure region but the other positive thing is that solubility of the oxygen will be high so whatever the air is going there because of the huge pressure it will become more soluble so that's a positive thing about the hydrostatic pressure mixing and uh, mass transfer as i told before it is the most critical factor in large scales because assuring a uniform environment in the ferment is difficult in large scale so one thing is gas liquid mixing oxygen availability will uh, change based on the hydrostatic pressure and the temperature the accumulation of the temperature is also happening in the large fermenters which is minuscule in small fermenters because of huge surface area but in large fermenters the temperature control is an issue so uh, as the temperature increases the solubility will become less so uh, then mixing time will be high we need to mix more thoroughly to avoid nutrient availability to uh, nutrient gradient and the ph gradient shear condition form production and then heat transfer uh, if you put uh, some coils in the large scale fermenters what happens is like there will be a hot spot because of the un if the mixing is inadequate uh, the heat will be stuck in a small region which leads to the increase in temperature and death of the microorganism so for mixing and mass transfer one good thing is that we have a mathematical calculation called a scale up window it's a very simple thing but you need to concentrate to understand this thing this is a graph developed based on different mixing parameters in the x axis you have aeration how much aeration you are giving in the y axis we have agitation how much agitation is provided so based on the relationship between the aeration and agitation if you are providing this much aeration and this much aeration uh, agitation your point will be somewhere here so this thing is called a scale up window scale up window is consists of different uh, parameters like accumulation of the carbon dioxide oxygen availability bulk mixing foam cost and shear so if you increase the aeration there will be increase in the bulk mixing and there is increase in the uh, shear stress so what is desirable is that whenever you are choosing an aeration agitation ratio that ratio should be inside the window not outside if you have a point somewhere here which is balanced there will, there is no co2 accumulation enough oxygen is getting enough mixing is there foam is not producing cost is less shear stress is Uh, manager but if you are giving high aeration and high agitation your point will go here which means that even if you are achieving all these factors forming will be high and the cost will be high so if you are giving little bit of aeration and agitation co2 accumulation will be high oxygen is not getting enough oxygen is not getting but mixing is not happening but if you are giving too little cost and form production will be very little so based on the position of the aeration agitation ratio in this window we can actually predict the scale up so which is a nice statistical method the thing we do in opposite to the scale up is the scale down whenever we are done doing a huge scale large scale study sometimes we need to evaluate its performance or we need to troubleshoot something or we need to optimize in some other ways so that we use scale down studies studies on small bayer reactor to predict the behavior of large production fermenters so if you have a huge fermenter if you want to change some carbon source or something like that we are not directly changing it in the large scale fermenters instead we change it in a small fermenter and we will develop a proof of concept then apply it to the large fermenters that's what we is called scale down studies it is used to for the optimization of industrial fermentation and for troubleshooting and it's also used for fermentation monitoring experiments so an ongoing fermentation we can actually modify its parameters by using scale down studies thank you so much